In this video, we are going to be creating a flashcard app in Absolutely Titanium. Now, uh, if you don't know what a flashcard is, it's basically one of those uh, simple little cards that uh, students, or I don't know, people use when they're revising. So basically you have a question at the front, and then at the back you have an answer. So you look at one flash flashcard, say, I don't know, what's 2 times 2? And then at the back it says 4, so you look at the question, and you can't see the answer and then you, you read what's two times two and you think in your head four and then you look back and you check with the answer to see if it's right it's really useful for I don't know memorizing uh, terminologies shortcuts doing uh, questions and so on I used it initially when I was uh, learning I think PHP or something like that which requires a bit of a uh, uh, putting information sticking it into your head okay so the first thing we're going to do is uh, before i write anything or all we need to do is just create a normal uh new titanium project titanium project and then just delete whatever was in your app.js no images required nothing all we're going to do is create a card with uh, some properties so the first thing we're going to do is create a window var win equals tie.ui.create window and the background color this time is going to be not white I'm going to set it to be EEE -E -E. so uh, it's going to be like a grayish color okay the next thing we're going to do is add a view so var view equals tie.ui.create not window uh, view and I don't need anything inside that so I'm just going to leave it as my brackets and semicolon at the end now what we need to do is create our label and what we're going to call it is cards for cards equal tie.ui.create label so that's going to be our flashcards and inside there I want the initial text to be uh, flashcards something like that and I want the font to be uh, let's give it a font size of uh, about 24 pixels Yep, and I'm going to set the background color to be different to our window background color and let's change it to F66. That's still going to be like a whitish grayish color. And I want the text to be at the center. Oops, center. And I want the border radius to be about four and I want it to be 200 pixels from the top uh, 10 pixels from the left and about 300 pixels wide and I'm just going to set the height to auto dependent and that's going to automatically adjust itself depending on the uh, the properties above so the font size and, and so on okay so uh, without uh, any more what do you call it function stuff I'm just going to quickly add uh, my cards into my view but not crads so that I don't forget and I am going to add my view to my win and I am going to open my win so let's see what we have so far okay so my app has loaded uh, F, the background color f66 wasn't a grayish color it was actually this pinkish color but oh well, uh, it still looks kind of nice. So we have our flashcard. Well, if I wanted to like make it visually more look like a flashcard, I could change the width, not width. I could change the height from auto to, I don't know, uh, about 50, 60 ish if I wanted to, but oh well, it doesn't really matter. This is our flashcard. And when we click on it, we are going to have uh, random questions popping up when you click on, click on it again we are going to have an answer to that question coming up as well so we let's start coding more uh, I always want to put everything uh, in between actually I, I always want to put the view dot add the window open at the very end so I am going to write uh, more code in between these two okay so the first thing we want to do is create our questions so for our questions and that is going to be an array so that equals the square brackets and inside here we are going to be adding some arrays in it 
So there we go. Okay, the array is going to be a question, so we're going to say Q. And then we have a question inside here, and then after that, we are going to have an answer. So the answer is going to be like so. And that could be, for example, uh, what is, I don't know, uh, capital, capital of uh, UK. And the answer could be London, and so on. So I am going to quickly create about five, ten questions, ten random questions, and I'll come back to you in a bit. Okay, I gave up after five. I was having real serious trouble with, I don't know, creating a question and answer. I made capital UK, what is one plus one, what is meaning of life, uh, Mac or Windows, and what does CSS stand for. I could go on saying what does PHP stand for, what does SQL stand for, what does HTML stands for, I don't know what's the capital, Japan, and so on and so on, but I think five is enough, so I am going to keep it as five. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is add an event listener. So let's give it some space so that I could write the code actually in the middle of the screen, not at the bottom, so it's easier to see. So we're going to say, what was our name of our label? So cards, cards dot add event listener. And the function we are, the thing we're going to be looking at is click, and we are going to be creating a function. Okay, uh, yep, cards is right. So, uh, how there? There we go. Okay, so we are going to uh, initially create two variables, var something and var something. Well, this is going to be a var answer, which we are going to assign a value to it later on. And the next the the second thing we are going to be adding is uh, count. That will do equals zero, and what that does is basically uh, it's going to determine for you whether we have currently the question up, question up, or the answer. So, for example, we have this question capital UK up, and uh, when we click on it again, we want the answer London to come up, not the question what is one plus one. So this count is going to uh, determine whether we currently have the question or the answer app and I'll write a small amount, small bit of a if statement to show you how you to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is when we click on this card, we are going to say not tab, count, plus plus, we are going to add one to tab and then say if, uh, not nine, count, uh, there. It was easy for me to write first and explain rather than explain and write. So we are going to say if count, uh, what was this again, uh, mod, mod, if count mod 2 equals equals 1, so if we divide count by 2 and the remainder is equal to 1, we are going to execute a bit of code and if it isn't we are going to say uh, else and do something else. Well, what does that mean? So when we click on this add event listener, we said count plus plus. So this count is now equal to one because initially that was zero. Okay. So and then uh, when this count uh, mod or divided by two has a reminder of one, that means that we haven't touched this. Uh, we haven't clicked on our flashcard yet. So we want this question to pop up. And then what we and then when we click on our flashcard again, because our count plus plus has a value of two, so basically it's a, uh, it's a switching between odd and even. So zero plus one is one, which is odd, and then plus one is two, which is even. So if we click on it again, because count is now equals to two or four or six or eight and so on, count uh, modulus two equals equals zero because there won't be any reminder and then that means that the question is already uh, displayed and we want the answer so we want this uh, code that's execute to show you the answer so that's the little uh, clever if else statement okay so over here we want the code to uh, show question and over here we want the code to show answer so we are going to write that now Okay, so if the count is count modulus 2 equals equals 1, we are going to say uh, var data 
equals data which is for the array equals uh, question question which is my our array name uh, question and then inside that we are going to be adding some math property or or math methods math dot floor and then math dot random oops random there we go and god where's my cursor and times it by a uh, question question dot length okay what that does uh, I'm sure you're familiar with JavaScript, so I'm not going to go over math.floor, math.random. If you're not, I highly recommend you look at my or watch my JavaScript tutorials. I think I cover math.floor, math.random. If not, uh, Google it. Learn JavaScript first. Okay, now what that does is it's going to give you a random number between 0 and 1. That's going to round it, and then that's going to times it by question.length, so the length of the question. So what this does basically and it's a little uh, math, uh, what do you call it, code that basically ex uh, gives you a random number between 0 and 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to give you a number between 0 and 4. If I had another set of questions, so if my math question dot length was 6, it's going to give me a random number between 0 and 5. Okay, so what we want to do now is change this text, this cards text, the label which is cards text, so this dot text, we want to change that to data dot q. So uh, we have this variable data, and that is going to be equals to a number random between zero and uh, one, two, three, four. And then what we want to do is change the text of our card to be the question of that uh, number. So if our data variable uh, gives us three as an answer, not as an answer, but as an output from our random uh, number generator. We want this 0, 1, 2, 3. So the text of our card is going to be Mac or Windows. And what, lastly, what we want to do is change our background color, background color to uh, something else. I don't know, 666. Okay, so and that's about it and let's change the answer to answer equals data dot a okay oops uh let's dot background color apparently there's something wrong color it's a typo nope it's not a typo hmm there's nothing wrong with it nope there's something wrong with it Oh, I need to change that to equals, of course. Okay, uh, I'll go over this uh, if statement one more time. So we have created a variable called count, and that's initially zero. And we created a variable called answer that has, has uh, a value it. And we have this event listener, which has a function. And it's initially going to add one to the count. So currently the count is an odd number. And we have this if statement saying if count modules two is equals to one. So if this count basically is an odd number, we want it to run this code to show the question. And if it isn't, we want to show the code to show the answer because that's going to keep on adding one to itself. So if I click on it again to show the answer, it's going to count is going to equal an even number. So it's going to execute the code over here because the count modulus two doesn't equal one, it's going to equal zero. However, if it equals to one, it means it needs to show the question. So we are going to set a variable called data, which basically gives you or creates a random number between zero and in this case, one, two, three, four. And then the text of this uh, cards, it's now going to equal the question of our current set data, which is going to be a number between zero and four. And then what the variable answer is going to be is going to be equals to the answer of that specific data value. Okay, so the text is going to be the question. So like what the CSS stand for. And then at the same time, the variable answer is going to be this answer here, cascading style sheet. So all we need to do now is change this bit or add the code to show the answer saying this dot text equals answer 
So well, because we already set the variable answer over here, we only need to say this dot text equals answer. And let's change the background color as well, just for fun. Col oops, Col equals, and uh, let's change it back to F66. Okay, so that's it, and a semicolon at the end, and apart from that, yeah, that's basically it. So I'm going to save my work and run the simulator. Okay, so our little flashcard app has been uh, loaded, or has loaded in our uh, iPhone simulator, and it initially says flashcard, and when I click on it, it's going to say what is one plus one, and the background color changes. And if I click on it again, it's going to give me the answer too. And if I click on it again, it's going to give me another random question, what does CSS stand for? And if I click on it again, it's going to give me the answer of that specific question. And if I keep, keep on clicking, meaning of life 42, meaning of life 42, oops, come on, Mac or Windows, I love both. And what does CSS stand for? Cascading style sheet. So it basically gives you a random question from that five of the uh, question and the answer created in my array. Uh, you can add more questions and answer to your array if you wish and you can also tweak this if statement a bit inside our advent listener function so that it displays each of them in ascending order so like it, uh, uh, it displays the data dot a the zero dot a and then one dot a and then two dot a and then three dot a and then four dot a and then you can loop it back saying if that if the data is bigger than uh, question dot lens or something like that. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to f uh, modify the code a bit so that it's a bit it's it will be uh, better for you when you want to revise if you really want to use this app, which I personally don't because I prefer to just write it on pen and paper. But if you do, that's fine. And I hope this was a, a little nice uh, video, which isn't little because it's already 17 minutes long. Uh, hopefully this was a bit different to my normal tutorial video where I just concentrate on one topic in our accelerated titanium and use it to create like, I don't know, uh, an app that changes an image or something like that. And instead we looked, we used a couple of things we already learned inside our video series to create uh, a working app. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.